Today, there will be men, important men who will go to their damnation for the sake of pressing their lips to it. my friend. Huh? What's the matter? It's a rape scene. I can't get it right. Mario, the rape is the very nucleus of the picture. And you must take your time with it. You understand? Let me introduce you to Vasco Politi. Hi. A gentleman of the press. <laughs> Watch out, he puts everything you say down on paper. <laughs> Who is that woman? You've never seen the Contessa Sanziani? Ah, that old woman, my young friend, was by any definition the greatest love goddess in all Europe. The absolute ravishing masterpiece of a feminine animal. The inspiration to countless artists of renown. Not to mention, of course, her many lovers, including Kaiser Leopoldo and Gabriele Dorazio. Hmm, as a matter of fact, she lives in my hotel. She must be a gold mine of memories. I can tell you. She gave me my start. She started this place years ago. She stopped outside one day in a huge car. Yellow as the sun. Then she came in dragged by these greyhounds. Yeah. Along with some very thin gentleman. Later on I found out he was an Egyptian prince. She asked me what my specialty was, and I said, beans cooked in oil. <laughs> she burst out laughing and told me to roast a pheasant. I did, and from then on in, she kept coming and brought all of Rome. If you gentlemen will please excuse me. Yes, yes. One of her greyhounds... What, 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 what? <laughs> one of her greyhounds was called Falstaff, and he was taller than the table. Would you forgive me, Contessa? I'm a reporter for Figaro, and I would like to interview you. Mm. Nice looking. Thank you. As I, uh... Understand it. You knew Kaiser Wilhelm and Gabriele Dorazio. Could you perhaps tell me something about your life at that time? My life belongs to me alone. I tell it only to myself. Have you thought, however, of writing your memoirs? All that you've seen, Contessa. It isn't what I've seen that matters. My life has not been that of a spectator. Oh, yes, I don't doubt it. But then... You need speak only of those who are dead. No one is dead. No one dies unless we wish them to. That is a secret that I will share with you. You see, time, you see, doesn't exist. It is terrible, I admit, not to be able to suffer anymore like the suffering of, of others. I would so passionately like to, but it's impossible for me any longer. That is the meaning of solitude. Any further questions, then you may come to my house tomorrow. Hamilton House at Hyde Park Corner. Contessa. Of course, Mario. In the, in the final scene, we must feel the underlying tragedy. Well, what, what did she say? Listen. I'm not sure. What do you mean? Either she's completely mad, or she made a complete fool of me. It's <laughs> exasperating not to know which. <laughs> Are you coming out with me tonight? Yeah. Sometimes two can make up better than one. Oh, I forgot. I have some more beds to turn down. I'll never get to the park on time. <laughs> <laughs> 
should wait. It gives them the illusion that there is still something worth waiting for. I want it to be very beautiful this evening and uh, very strange. Oh, in that cupboard. On the shelf. Yes, in the, on, on the left. You bring me the sari. The sari. Yes, have you found it? Uh, yes, I have it right here. But you haven't got a thing. I told you to look on the left. Yeah, but there's only a card. Board. Yes, yes, yes. Go on. Is this it? Yes. Thank you, my dear. For well, this was given to me by an Indian ambassador. I've only worn it once. <gasps> ah. Oh, senor. Oh, it's like a sunset. Yes, indeed. Oh, take off that shabby dress. It makes you look like a servant. <laughs> but go on, take it off. Oh, Jean, do as I tell you or I shan't bother with you anymore. Don't be afraid of showing yourself naked. Modesty is only a, a sense of imperfection. A virtue taught by ugly women. Yes. <laughs> one gets rid of it directly, one knows one is beautiful. Be proud of your belly. Be proud of your breasts. Be proud of your skin. Never deny these precious gifts. It's an insult to God. I could be like you. Oh, never, never. You must never wish to be like anyone else in this world. Unless you want to be a copy. Copies, of course. Yes, they're going to produce mediocrity. Now, come and sit down here. If you're not an original, you're nothing. The world, you see, worships the original. Oh, your hair. Oh. I'm afraid I must cut it. No, Signora, no. but don't worry. Well, I shan't hurt you. And you look wonderful there. There. It's your turn, little one, to be desired and to conquer. Tonight I choose between hating you and directing your steps. Now, be yourself if you can. That is the important thing. And if you can't, be silent. He'll imagine what he wants to imagine. For this, of course, he has to pay a high price. Oh, not for the money itself, never but for what he thinks of you, for the value he places on you. Now, tonight, as you move along the hotel corridor, you will notice the jeweler's windows. And as you pass the one on the right, you will point out a large diamond necklace. Open your mouth. And you will say, as a child might say, oh, how pretty that is. That's all. He'll understand, I promise you. Is that clear? I think so. Good. <laughs> 